Welcome to the special meeting of the City Council for uh, December 12, 2016. Please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk. <sighs> We have the call of the meeting. Accepted and placed on file. We have the officer's return of notice. Accepted and placed on file. In order that the city council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59 and personal property. Councilor's time hearing arrived for public hearing. We will now uh, commence a public hearing. The first speaker at the public hearing will be uh, Mr. O'Donnell to make a presentation for the assessor's office. Good evening, Councilors. I'd like to make a brief statement concerning the fiscal year 2000 tax rate classification hearing. First, I'd like to thank the entire staff of the assessor's office for their support and assistance throughout the year. The assessed values for fiscal year 2017 represent the estimate of market value as of January 1, 2016, <coughs> utilizing verified sales data for calendar year 2015. Assessments represent 100% of market value as required by Massachusetts general law. The Department of Revenue has certified the real and personal property values for the city yes. as well as the new growth value. <coughs> The assessors are required to fairly assess 27,620 parcels in the city. There are 24,225 residential parcels, 1,740 commercial and industrial parcels, 1,633 personal property accounts. The total, ta the total taxable The total taxable value of all real and personal property in the city for fiscal year 2017 is $6,688,597,389, which is a 9.57% increase from fiscal year 2016. This year, the city added a total of $2,259,000 $383 in new growth tax dollars in residential, commercial, and personal property. The median single family assessed value for fiscal year 2017 has increased 11.05% from $193,700 to $215,100. The median two family assessed value has increased 15.55% from $231,200 to $267,150. And the median three-family assessed value has increased 22.55% from $261,200 to $320,100. Whereas the median commercial assessed values for fiscal year 2017 only increased 2.29% 2 from $227,395 to $232,600. And the median industrial assessed value increased 1.85% from $240,500 to $244,950. People often associate rising assessments with rising taxes. However, this is not the case. Rising budgets cause rising taxes. If the budget increase, typically taxes increase. If the budget decreases, typically taxes decrease. The assessed value represents the market value of the property. If all assessments went down 25% and the budget increased, taxes will still increase. The purpose of tonight's tax rate classification hearing is to adopt a residential factor. The city council <coughs> will decide on how much of the tax levy the owners of the residential properties will pay and how much of the tax levy the, the owners of commercial, industrial, and personal property will pay. This, this, this decision is what creates two tax rates or a split rate in the city of Brockton. The, sp 
split tax rate in the city of Brockton taxes commercial, industrial, and personal property at a higher rate than residential property. If there was no shift, there would be one rate, and based upon this year's levy, the single rate for the city of Brockton would be $19.37. If council decided on a single rate, the median single family tax bill would increase $803.86. The median two family tax bill would increase $1,161.07. The median three family tax bill would increase $1,665.91. The median commercial tax bill would decrease $2,775.73, and the median industrial tax bill would decrease $2,956.45 for fiscal year 2017. Last December, City Council voted to set the fiscal year of 2016 shift factor at 1.57. This meant for the fiscal year 2016, commercial, industrial, and personal property, while representing 20.71% of the total taxable value, paid 32.51% of the total taxes. Brockton continues to have the lowest average tax bill of the surrounding towns based on fiscal year 2016 debt. The average single family tax bill was $3,557 and was a $229 increase over fiscal year 2015. Bill. The average tax bill in the city is $1,432 than the average bill of the contiguous towns, including Brockton, and was 32% below last year's state average of $5,247. Thank you, and I'll answer any questions. We'll have questions later. Okay. At this point, any member of the public that would like to speak on the uh, tax classification for the budget is welcome to step up to the rostrum. I'll give your name to the clerk. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Chris Cooney. I'm president of the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. We own and occupy the former Edison power station across the street. Uh, we pay a tax bill of around $18,000 a year. Um, we also represent about 1,000 companies in 18 communities, uh, half of which about are here in the city. I'm um, here to represent the business community in requesting as I have yearly, uh, that the City Council understand uh, the impact that taxes can have on the business community and their decisions to locate here and to remain here and to grow here. Um, I know many of you have been through this before. You, you understand the ramifications. I also understand that uh, people vote. Uh, businesses don't always. Um, but. As I, I uh, had sent, sent out earlier to you all, uh, was a description of the fact that if rates, uh, if um, taxes, tax values go up on commercial property, uh, meaning the value is there, then it benefits the residents as well. Meaning if businesses are doing well and their values are going up, uh, then they are already paying uh, more than the equal <coughs> rate and more than their share, and many would, would say. And uh, the higher the values go, uh, the better we all do. Um, and so I would ask that we focus on increasing value as opposed to taxes. Uh, I think there's two ways to do that. One is to recognize uh, where you stand. Uh, we're the fourth highest uh, in the region. Uh, we used to be, as commercial tax rate, we used to be the highest. Uh, so I think we're moving in the right direction. Um, second is the best utilization of the assets that we have in the community. I think uh, we are way overdue to take a, a real strategic uh, look at what we have in the city, and it is extensive, and use those resources in a business-like fashion to gain value for everyone here. And I'm talking about sewage, I'm talking about water, I'm talking about tax rates and amenities for business and residents alike. I really think there's some opportunities here uh, for us to look at those uh, rates that haven't been reviewed, particularly the sewer and water rates, uh, for years and use them strategically to attract and retain businesses. We just saw Baines Electric lo uh, located over at West Bridgewater. Pearl Mounds just moved to Braintree about a month ago. If you don't need water and sewer, you don't have to be here. Uh, and as the uh, graphic shows and what I had sent you earlier today, 
Uh, it shows the hotspot, the highest taxes in this region are Brockton, Randolph, Holbrook, and Avon. And again, if you don't need water and sewer, as I just said to the Avon selectman three weeks ago, uh, you can get the same basic property in Easton for about $10,000 less in taxes a year. That's about $1,000 a month. That's pretty significant for a 10,000 square foot building. Um, I've had Bill Callahan here before. I've had Larry Siskin here before. I've had uh, Mark Donahue, and they brought in their data. Uh, they feel like sometimes they're not, um, I think, uh, getting the response and the urgency that they want from this council. I, I, I urge you to move in the right direction, closer to a 150, and, and keep us in play when relocation companies are looking at uh, the city as a possibility. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooney. Is there anyone else who'd like to step up and uh, address the, uh, the budget? State your name for the clerk, please. Certainly, Jean Holmes. Um, <clears throat> I, I have to start by saying I, I, I understand that the businesses have a lobbyist and, and somebody who speaks for them. But the biggest problem that this city has is, is that the residents don't have people to speak for them. And each and every one of you were elected to speak for us and to help us. The residents are getting clobbered with their taxes. It has to stop. And today and tonight should be the night. Now, I'm going to tell you that I came here tonight to speak. I looked and searched for the information to try to get informed. But lo and behold, the most important information, which is the information about what was to be talked about tonight, was not available to the public or to anyone, as I understand it, before tonight. Now, how can the residents come and request help <coughs> if they don't even have the information available? With all due respect, this information should have been available online. It should have been available on the website that so someone could read it. But I was able to actually get a hold of it last night late, so I had to spend last night late and tonight looking over this, only to come in tonight and to have Mr. O'Donnell call me a troublemaker. With all due respect, I came here to request that as a resident, you lower our tax rates. Mr. Cooney just mentioned Easton. Guess what? We can pay less in tax rates in Easton than we can here in Brockton. The residents have been bearing the brunt of this city for long enough. The commercial properties quite frankly, from what I have seen, aren't even being assessed very high. So it's sort of one of those things where, yes, they pay a little higher rate, but if they're not being assessed as much as they should be, and in some instances perhaps half of what they should be, then guess what? They're paying less than us as taxpayers in the end. So um, again, I didn't have a long opportunity to review this. I don't know how, how many of you counselors received this information to digest, to review. But I looked at just one page that I found quite interesting. And that was, I, I was actually able to find last year's online. So I, I really found it quite um, uh, odd that, lo and behold, many of the uh, and there's no pages that I have on my copy, but there's a list in the packet I believe you have of, of record owners, and it, Good Samaritan is the first one, and it goes down one through 18. And if you look at that page, and it looks at, and, and it gives us what the total taxes are for those various places. Then I looked at last year's. Well, lo and behold, guess what? Those 18 listed, almost all of them are gonna pay less this year in taxes. Somehow or another, even though the rate is still about the same, or maybe it'll go up a little bit or down a little bit, but we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars less in taxes from what I saw in last year's paperwork and this year's in paperwork. I urge you and ask you as a representative, as a resident, as a taxpayer, and quite frankly, somebody who has to speak out because the residents don't have a lobbyist. Somebody has to ask you, please, look at this information, check it out, verify it, and, and find out what really is going on here. And if you have to err, then I say err in the favor of the taxpayers, the residents, 
that are here that elect you. If the commercial businesses have to pay more, then they should pay more. They're making money. We as taxpayers aren't making money by living in our houses and paying. We're just looking for regular services that we can't even get at the rate that we're paying. And you look at the other, at the other um, towns. Many, many of the other towns that are listed in this packet that I have have a substantially higher commercial rate and I'm going to guess that their valuations are even more proper than in Brockton. So with all due respect, I ask you to consider, please, have mercy on us as residents and give us a lower tax rate. And if you don't have the information and haven't had enough time, I ask you to take time and to ask for time to review and digest this and compare and contrast it to what is in last year's because it's quite interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Do anyone else who would like to step forward and speak? Wow. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Uh, at this point, counselors, uh, <coughs> if you have any questions for Ms. O'Donnell or for uh, Mr. Condon or the other assessors, <coughs> we will take questions at this time. Councilor Farwell. I just, since this is the first time I've done this, I'd just like to go over this with Mr. O'Donnell, make sure I'm understanding this. Uh, um, and I'm, John, I'm looking at the, uh, the handout, which is City of Brockton Fiscal Year 2017 hearing, and it's impact and classification, single family from 193 to 215, uh, and then two family from 231 <coughs> yeah, to 267. Sure, medians. Yeah, so just so that I understand this, basically this says to us that the average single family house has gone in value from 193.7 to 215.1. Yeah, that's which, the median. That's the median, yeah. right, which, which the median would be about 21,400. Yeah, pretty close. Okay, and let's just take commercial. It's gone from 227.395 to 232.6, yes. the median, and that's $5,205. Yeah, okay, now using those figures, if nothing changed, just taking the, the current tax rate, that would mean that the average homeowner would spend 21.4 times 1736, which apparently comes out to about $371 more in taxes per year. Yes, yes, and the commercial would spend $5,205. That would be, uh, uh, strike that, $166.50. That would be 5.205 times 3202. Again, the mean. Yes. Okay. Um, I guess that's all I have for now. I'm just shifting through some figures here. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councilor Sullivan. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. O Mr. Um, Condon, I just had a quick question. Good evening, Jay. Good evening. So I, I think uh, every year when we do this, um, one of the councilors always ask you for your personal recommendation relative to where you think the tax rate should be set in terms of the factor. Um, so I'm going to ask you this year uh, okay. where you think it should be. Okay. I have a couple of comments in advance of that recommendation sure. because I do have a recommendation. It's a sort of a range, uh, but I'll, I'll give you that. Thank you. Uh, first, as you heard from Mr. O'Donnell a few minutes ago, the city's value is now up to almost $6.7 billion, uh, and that's an increase of about 9.5% compared to last year. Um, but is always the devil's in the details because what happens to an individual taxpayer, whether he's a commercial owner or a residential owner, depends upon how his particular value changed in relation to the overall value and also how his particular value changed in relation to the overall value of his class. And things aren't changing evenly in Brockton, which is one of the factors that's causing uh, problems, I think, for residential taxpayers. So let me talk a little bit about that. As, as you know, uh, in relation to the uh, comments that were made earlier, the assessing is done by a mass appraisal mechanism. We don't send assessors out to do an appraisal as we've done if a person was selling his property and getting commercial appraisals to give to a bank. It's statistical analysis and the outcome of that analysis has been certified by the Department of Revenue saying in general it represents a fairly accurate representation of all the values in the city. But it doesn't mean it's particularly correct for any particular property and the uh, property owners have means to address if they think they've been unfairly assessed through the abatement process. But 
the Department of Revenue has said overall the $6.7 billion fairly represents the value of the city. And it also means that the Department of Revenue believes that the classifications of properties, whether commercial or industrial or residential, are also accurate with respect to those particular sectors. And even within the residential, they do an analysis of the values by quartiles to see if there's a fair representation in those different segments. And that's what they're saying is okay. So that's what you're dealing with. Doesn't mean that every property, property is properly assessed or market value, but in general, the, the technique was proper. The value was up, but it's still below where we were in fiscal 2007 by quite a bit. In fiscal 2007, we were $8.2 billion. And the city's values declined from that quite steeply over three to four years after that and ended up in a trough in fiscal 2014 of about $5.3 billion. So we, we lost about a third of our value over that period of time, most of it at the very beginning of it. And we all know that what really caused that uh, was the residential real estate crisis that caused the uh, recession in the economy. And we're still <coughs> suffering somewhat by the effects of that on property values in the city. We haven't cleared the foreclosure market. That's still a major impact. So as those values went steeply down, and in order to maintain tax rates that weren't too, too punitive for residents, some of the tax burden was shifted to commercial back in those earlier days. Uh, that's a problem we're trying to address today, but that's the main reason for it. The values are up unevenly, even getting to 6.7 billion. So John mentioned this, but singles are up about 10%. But twos and threes are up 15% and over 21%. So that latter segment is driven not just by residential values, but by rental values in the area, because you know the twos and the threes have an, have an ability to rent out those apartments. And high market rents, especially north of the city, are bleeding south into the Brockton area, and that's causing those values to go up at a more rapid rate than the residential single family. And then on the commercial and industrial sector, there are three major components there. Commercial, industrial, and third is personal property, which is property owned by businesses. Commercial is only up about a percent. Industrial, a little over a percent. Personal property is up by 11%. Personal property growth is coming from current businesses in the city. We're not getting new growth in the city from commercial investment in the city or industrial investment in the city, new investment in the city. And that's a problem because if we were getting more of that kind of growth, you'd be able to have a better time in shifting some of the burden of the residential back onto newer businesses. So you've got a trade-off there. What does it take to get investment of new, new business growth in the city compared to how do you take care of the residents who are living here now? And we all know that Brockton's residents, compared to many of the surrounding communities, are not as well off. Some are better off, but this city, on in general, is not as well to do as some of the surrounding communities. And therefore, the ability to pay property taxes on your homes, as was just mentioned, is not as easy to accomplish. $1,000 to a person who's making $40,000 a year is a lot more money than it is to somebody who's making $80,000 a year. So your task here every night in November or early December is always a difficult, difficult one trying to balance those. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about new growth and its implications. New growth in the tax base doesn't come as a result of higher prices for current homes. As John said, if, if the values of current homes are going up at about the same rate as the levy, it just means that the tax rate, if nothing else is done, stays about the same. New growth comes from new investment in the city and new homes or improvements to homes and new investment. And in fiscal 17, the taxation derived from new growth in this year's levy, uh, which is almost $130 million, the new growth piece is about $2.3 million. That's a nice number. But the city's residential value is about 80% of the city, but only about a quarter of the new growth came from the residents. Most of it, as I said, came from the personal property taxation. It's not a sustainable model to get healthy fiscal circumstances in the city longer term, and we know we've got a fair number of unfunded liabilities we need to address. So the present levy at just under $130 million is about $37.5 million below the absolute ceiling that is set by Proposition 2.5, and, 
And of that $37.5 million, about $3 million comes from being below the levy limit itself. That would be money you could get uh, into the appropriation process simply by requesting an appropriation and approving it as opposed to having to go to the uh, voters for an override. So you've got some room in the, in the levy capacity. And the $3 million not being levied left on the table benefits all taxpayers because it's just not in their, in their tax bills. So I do have a, I do have a recommendation. The Chamber has asked for a move away from the present factor of 1.57 to shift even less than that. But if you were to even maintain the present factor of 1.57, um, that factor would decrease commercial tax bills, mm -hmm. as you may have seen on the uh, point that Mr. Farwell made, Councillor Farwell made. I don't think that's an outcome that most would like to see, is another decrease, because one of the reasons for the uh, change in those tax uh, bills on the top taxpayers from fiscal 16 to fiscal 17 in that comparison sheet, one of the reasons is that last year's factor at 1.57 actually decreased tax bills for many, many, many businesses. And that's, that's what caused that, not so much the assessments, but the factor itself. I would like to see a tax factor set, my recommendation would be one that doesn't have an awful lot of change in the present commercial rate, which is about $32. I wouldn't want to see an awful lot of increase there. But I'd also like to see one that doesn't do an awful lot of damage in terms of tax bill increases to the residents, who most of whom picked up a pretty healthy tax increase last year. So I think a fair objective would be attempt an attempt to about maintain the commercial rate, but also, which would result in a slightly higher bill for the commercial, but would also result in a lowering of the tax rate for the residential and not much of an increase on them. So the range I'm thinking that would be appropriate, the lower end of it would be about 1.65. That would actually drop the commercial rate a little bit. And the higher end of it would be about 1.69, somewhere in that range. And I think if you split that difference, you know, 166, 167, you'll have done pretty well. If you get to 169, in my opinion, it won't be too, too damaging. And if you get to 1.65, I don't think that's much that the commercial sector could complain about because it would mean an actual decrease in their rate. So that's my recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Conn. Mr. Cooney, I just had a question for you, sir. Uh, Mr. Cooney's not part of the okay. uh, presentation. Right. Sorry. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillors? Uh, Councillor Farwell, as long as nobody wants to speak, because he's already spoken once. Councillor Farwell. You know, I watched all of you uh, last year when you went through this, and I thought, oh boy, right? This is this is the one vote that you uh, that you don't look forward to because you you talk about the wisdom of Solomon. Uh, shortly after I was sworn in, I went to a, a, a tax abatement meeting, and Mr. O'Donnell was kind enough to be there with his staff and Councilor Monahan and Councilor Azak. A lot of people were there. And it really struck me how much property taxes affect people in this city. Uh, it's not just that a tax bill may go up, it's the car insurance bill. It's something else goes up, school tuition. And so this year I think really has to be the year that we give some tax relief to the average homeowner. Businesses are critically important to us, they generate jobs, but on the other hand we don't want to kill the customer base and have people move away or have young people perhaps graduate from Brockton High School and not get a job and stay with the city. Uh, I noticed that on the handout, the average single family tax bills, which it, it's, it's very helpful, but it is a bit misleading when you put the average tax bill, bill for Brockton because you have to add in water, sewer, and trash pickup, mm -hmm. which you don't have to add in in other communities. So other communities may have a higher tax rate, but the net payout by the residents may be less because they don't have to uh, pay for water and sewer and, and refuse pickup. Uh, I think Mr. Condon came up with an excellent suggestion. Unfortunately, I'm at the, little, I'm at the high end of that. <clears throat> and I guess to get the discussion going, I'm going to move for a factor of 1.7. And that would make the residential tax rate, if I'm reading this document correctly, $16.10. And it would make the commercial tax rate $32.93. That is a $0.91 cent per thousand increase. However, hearing the, the uh, 
hearing the discussion about how commercial values have not risen as dramatically as residential, I, I think the impact would not be uh, as detrimental as it would appear. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded to set the tax factor at 1.70. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you call the roll? Ajax. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. No. Pioneering. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monahan. No. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eight in the affirmative, two in the negative. The tax factor is set at 1.70. We'll now take a recess uh, while we figure the actual rate. Chairman. Uh, actually, Council, we haven't voted. Your motion will be in a minute because we now will actually vote. The, council, the clerk will read the order. We now will actually vote on the tax rate, okay. which is backed into by the factor. So, Mr. Clerk, please read the order. In Council, December 12, 2016, audit. City Council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59 and personal property. Residential, 66.94. Commercial, 22.76. Industrial, 4.01. Personal property, 6.29. The factor for such classification shall be 1.70. And those numbers, that we vote on that? Or? We've already voted. Que questions on adoption of the order by a roll call vote. And just so you know, counselors, those numbers are arrived at by the classification that we just voted on. Ms. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The tax rate is adopted. Mr. Chairman, I move reconsideration in the hope that it does Second. not prevail. Second. Motion made and seconded for reconsideration in the hopes it does not Close prevail. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those against? Uh, reconsideration fails. Uh, Councilors, we will recess, but do not leave uh, because uh, you have to sign uh, the paperwork for this tonight, this evening for the Department of Revenue. The meeting is adjourned. For December 12, 2016, Council Sullivan. Mr. President, if we could uh, take a moment of silence. The city of Brockton lost an icon, John Learned. Yeah. Uh, John was 95, World War II veteran. I had the privilege, uh, privilege of serving 10 years on the uh, hospital board with him at Good Samaritan. Just a great guy. Did so much for the city of Brockton in the shoe industry. He really was the, the linchpin on the shoe museum. So if we could, he was buried today, if we could remember him right now. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councillor. <clears throat> Mr. Clerk, item number one. We have the acceptance of the minutes of November 28, 2016, City Council meeting. Acceptance placed on file. We have the report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of December 5, 2016. Acceptance placed on file. We have a communication from the Executive Director of the Parking Authority submitting a letter of resignation of Henry E. Tataglia as a member of the Parking Authority Board, effective November 30th, 2016. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the Mayor recommending the acceptance of Mass General Laws, Chapter 60, Section 3A, form of bill, on notice, electronic format, which would permit the city to provide the option for taxpayers to receive their bills electronically and would govern how the city implements this option. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324, the Acts of 1990, certifying the proposed <laughs> acceptance of Mass General Laws Chapter 60, Section 3A, form of bill notice. Accepted and placed on file. We have the petition for a motor vehicle repair mechanical license located at 967 Montello Street, Unit A, B, for Solid Auto Care Corporation. In clerk's office, June 16, 2016. Hearing is signed for September 26, 2016 at 8 p.m. In council, September 26, 2016. Council of Fowl, motion to refer to public safety properly seconded. Motion carried by a hand vote. 
The recommendation is favorable with stipulations. Questions on the stipulation? Uh, Councilor Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as, as chair of the public safety, I believe one of the stipulations was to get um, our building commissioner, Mr. Kassiri, and uh, Mr. Williams, our, our fire chief, to go out there. I don't know if we received that. That's why we postponed it two weeks ago. Mr. Clerk, do we have that? Uh, we'll check it to see if it did come in. And that would be for six, seven, eight, and nine agenda yes. items. They didn't get this in public safety? No. So you're going to have to send it out? Yeah, just postpone it. Postpone it. Counselor, it looks like the fire chief has not come in. Would you like to make a motion to postpone? I'd like to make a motion to postpone agenda item six, and I'm going to be doing the same, seven, eight, and nine as well. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded to postpone item number six. All those in favor? All those opposed? Item number six postponed to the next uh, uh, council meeting. Item number seven. Can you read item number seven and we'll postpone? Okay. Petition of Bernard Joseph, J and B Auto Repair and Frameworks, Motor Vehicle Repair Mechanical License, located at 967 Montella Street, Unit C and D, <clears throat> Brockton. Care to sign for September 26, 2016 at 8 p.m. Council hearing uh, September 26, 2016. Council file a motion, refer to public safety, properly seconded. The motion carried by a hand vote. Council Sullivan. Chairman, I'm, uh, same uh, reasons for number six. I'm going to postpone, make a motion to postpone seven until we receive that letter. Second. The next city council meeting. Motion made and seconded to postpone until the next city council meeting. All those in favor? All those opposed? Yeah. Item is postponed. The same property. Item number eight. Bernard, uh, petition of Bernardo and Ron Auto Repair for Motor Vehicle Repair Mechanical License, located at 967 Montello Street, Unit E, Brockton, mm -hmm. Clerk's Office, May 17, 2016. Hearing is signed for September 26, 2016, at 8 p.m. And Council, Council file motion to refer to public safety, properly seconded, motion carried by a hand vote. Council Sullivan. Can I make motion to postpone the next uh, full Second. city council Second. meeting? Second. Motion made to second to postpone until the next full city council meeting. All those in favor? All those opposed? Postpone until the next Seven council nine. meeting. Item number nine. Seconds Petition of Roland Automotive for Motor Vehicle Repair Mechanical License, located at 967 Montello Street, Unit F, Brockton and Clerk's Office, June 16, 2016. Hearing is signed for September 26, 2016 at 8 p.m. In council, council file a motion to refer to public safety. Properly seconded, <coughs> motion carried by hand vote. Council Sullivan. President, make a motion to postpone the next full city council meeting. Second. Motion made and seconded to postpone item number nine until the next full city council meeting. All those in favor? All those opposed? Item is postponed. Item number 10. An ordinance amendment chapter 27 of the revised ordinances of the city of Brockton be ordained by the city council of Brockton as follows. Chapter 27 zoning, section 27-4, designation of zones is hereby amended by deleting the section in its entirety and inserting new sections 27-35 <clears throat> Clause 1, I-4, Salvage Yard, Overlay District. End Council, September 26, 2016. Ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Ordinance and Planning. That report is favorable. Question is to be ordained by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Barnes. Yes. Beauregard. No. Cruz. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monahan. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eight in the affirmative, one in the negative. The order is the ordinance is ordained. An ordinance amending section 2 146 of the right revised ordinances of the city of Brockton, section 2 146, compensation school committee members elected by ward and council September 26, 2016. Ready to refer to standing committee on ordinance. That report is favorable. Question is to be ordained by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Barnes. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The ordinance is ordained. Item number 12. To the crossing pump station. Yeah. 
audit the sum of $2 million appropriated to pay costs of inspecting and rehabilitating seven miles of the parallel 24-inch transmission main from the Silver Lake Water Treatment Plant <coughs> to Browns Crossing Pump Station. There is a conditional certification on this in Council November 14, 2016. <coughs> Read and referred to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? He's at. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Tadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. The order is adopted. An appropriation of $73,037.87 from unappropriated estimate receipts of the general fund for fiscal 2017 to fiscal 2016 court judgments, $62,904.30. Roof repair fund, $4309, $632.46. Fiscal 2015-911 grant fund, $3306, $3,381.43. Fiscal 2013-911 grant fund, $3278, $6,119. $6,119.68 in order to eliminate various funds of appropriation deficits in Council November 14, 2016. Ready for the Committee on Finance, that report is favorable. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Barnes. I believe when this first came up, myself and Councilor Rodriguez, we questioned uh, uh, Solicitor Nasrella about the court judgments and looking for some information on that. I know I had not received it, and I don't know if he had either. Um, but at least for me, I'm still... That's still something outstanding for me to be able to vote on this. And I know there was some controversy like splitting it up or something at one time. I don't remember how it ended, but I just know I never got that. <coughs> uh, do you want to make a motion? To postpone? Yes. That would be. Is I'd there like a second? To second? Second. Second. Oh, thank you. Motion made and seconded to postpone until the next uh, council meeting. All those in favor? Opposed? Postpone until the next council meeting. <coughs> Item <coughs> number 14. Resolved that the Council on Aging, after careful analysis and by vote of its members, determines the Shaw Center is the most appropriate and advantageous location for expansion of programs and services. The City Council expresses its support for that relocation and urges the Mayor to take whatever actions may be necessary to support and assist this proposal. Yeah. In Council, November 28, 2016, for the Committee on Finance, that report is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the Clerk please call the roll? He's yes. Barnes. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. The resolve is adopted. Resolve the Public Safety Committee of the City Council shall meet and review the provisions of the new law, review current zoning, business regulations, and public safety issues with appropriate department heads, hold a public hearing at the discretion of the committee, and report back to the full council no later than the first regular meeting in March 2017 with recommendations of proposed ordinance changes to protect the interests of our residents. And council, November 28, 2016. Ready to refer to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Council Farwell. Mr. President, I move that this be referred to the Public Safety Committee. Second. Motion made and seconded to refer to Public Safety. All those in favor? All those opposed? The item is referred to Public Safety. Item 16. Resolved that the City Auditor appear before a committee of the City Council <laughs> to review required auditing procedures and that the City Auditor is authorized and directed to implement policies and procedures to account for proper recording of data, processing of payments, and expenditures of funds. Further, that all departments, boards, and commissions are to adhere to the policies and procedures. In Council, November 14, 2016. For the Committee on Finance, that report is favorable. Council Farwell. Mr. President, I move this be referred to the Accounts Committee. Second. Motion made and seconded to refer to Accounts. All those in favor? All those opposed? Refer to the Accounts Committee. Uh, Councilors, before we get to the new orders, I'd just like to take a moment to uh, welcome Troop 143, Boy Scout Troop from Roosevelt Heights here tonight. Yeah. And led by their Scoutmaster Sam Goldman, uh, Yvonne <laughs> Burdett, the Committee Chair and uh, Steve Boudreau, a member of the committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to say, boys, good job, especially on a night when there's a Patriots game. So <laughs> you've earned your badge tonight. So, <laughs> And counselors, do them a favor and let's move quickly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, the Ward 7 counselor asked me to uh, make sure to 
to announce it tonight, and she'll be at one of your meetings soon. So thank you very much. Item number 17. Order that the naming of Came Street also be known as McAllister Way. Refer to finance. Order that the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs is offering reimbursable grants to cities and towns to support the preservation and restoration of urban parks throughout the parkland acquisitions and renovation for communities grant program 301 CMR 5.00. City of Brockton is eligible for $400,000 in grant funding, and the Brockton Redevelopment Authority mm -hmm. has allocated $120,000 in community de development block grant funds for the Walker Playground. Refer to finance. How does the City Council authorize the acceptance of Mass General Laws, Chapter 60, Section 3A? <clears throat> form of bill or notice electric format which would permit the city to provide the option for taxpayers to receive their bills electronically and would govern how the city implements this option. Refer to finance. Resolve. <clears throat> give this in its entirety here. The result that there's a need to establish a location to replace the former Albert per Baron Sully Field, which was eliminated when the Campanelli Stadium and Conference Center Complex was constructed. And whereas the Park Department has undertaken a study to determine an appropriate location to construct a soccer field, and residents have contacted members of the City Council to offer input and suggestions on po uh, potential sites and related issues of parking and hours of use. And whereas both of these proposals require cooperative effort between City Departments and the City Council representing the representatives the residents of our community. Now therefore be it resolved that the Real Estate Committee of the City Council in coordination with the City Engineer and other departments undertakes a study of potential sites where the aforementioned facilities might be located on city-owned property in order to accommodate oh, the needs of our youth and adult mm. populations. Uh, that would be referred to real estate. Okay. Resolved to invite representatives from the Catmobile, a low-cost spay-neuter clinic currently providing services in the city to both pet owners and feral cat colonies to discuss further plans and opportunities to address this concern more thoroughly. Refer to finance. I believe there are some late files, Council. Uh, yeah. Mr. Clerk. Yes, I have two. Motion for two uh, late files. Motion made and seconded to accept two late files. All those, uh, is there a second? Second. Sir. Motion made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? Mr. Clerk. Order that the mayor be and is hereby authorized to transfer ownership of the city-owned parcel at 19 Main Street, commonly known as the First Parish Building, map 092, route 014, plot 127, that was previously declared by city council to be surplus, available for disposition to the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. Refer to finance. Notice amended chapter 27 of the revised notices of the city of Brockton. Be it ordained by the city council of the city of Brockton, chapter 27 zoning is hereby amended by adding the following new article. <coughs> article, <se> <coughs> excuse me. Article 16, <coughs> let me do this again here. <laughs> the article moratorium, the regulation and taxation of marijuana act. Uh, refer to ordinance. And planning, I'm sorry. Refer to ordinance and planning. Okay. Uh, uh, any other? Councilor Azak. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, relative to this evening's setting of the tax rate, uh, myself and a couple of my city council colleagues are hosting a hands-on workshop in January. So I'd like everybody to save the date. It is Saturday, January 14th, 2017, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the main library. There will be more information to come, so any resident that is interested in um, attending this workshop, it's to help, um, f help you fill out your abatements, and uh, so save your tax bills, which you will be receiving uh, the beginning of January. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Sullivan. Mr. President, a moment of personal privilege. You may. I just wanted to uh, announce I will be calling a public safety meeting one week from tonight, which is December 19th at 6.30 here in the chamber. Uh, we have uh, a, a few items we need to address, uh, hopefully get them done before the end of the year. So it's 6.30 before our 7 o'clock Finance Committee meeting. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Councilor Rianeri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to remind those that are on the Accounts Committee, we do have a meeting scheduled for next Monday evening. It's 6 o'clock p.m. in the GAR room, and that's next Monday, 6 p.m., December 19th, in the GAR room. That's the Accounts Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Lally. Any personal privilege? You may. Okay. I wanted to uh, give a shout-out and a thank you to the... Uh, uh, the Just Checking In Fund and all the volunteers who 
you know, who put wreaths out on veterans' graves recently. Uh, shout out to Mary Waldron, uh, the Auxiliary Post 1046, the Brockton Fire Department, Fairway Landscaping, Designing Images Florist, Russell and Pika Funeral Home, Brockton Area Workforce Investment Board, and the uh, Cemeteries in par uh, Department, including uh, the, the person who runs the show there, Laureen Hardiman who I also understand it was her uh, birthday recently, so happy birthday. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else? Uh, we'll be here next Monday night. Those of you that aren't on subcommittees, be here for finance at 7 o'clock. We're adjourned.